like every time you hang out with your buddies and anyone goes off-roading, this ha like has to happen. Yeah, we'll get them off. <laughs> Ronda Ibex. Or the Gregos. Gregos. Shoot a Ronda, shoot, shoot a Ronda. Shoot a Ronda, shoot. We are up north in Michigan at our buddy's cabin for his bachelor party weekend. So we're gonna do a little bit of off-roading. Then we're gonna go to a wild game dinner and get a tour of the largest privately owned taxidermy studio in the entire world. It's gonna be awesome. This is all state land probably here, right? Yep. Yeah, it's all state land. You can tell it's a rub by the way that it looks. <laughs> no, just kidding. Deer come and they'll scrape their antlers against this to get the velvet off before mating season. This is good deer sign and pretty good trails in through here too. What's David's last name? Goodell. Oh, yeah. I'm David Goodell and this is Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> tip it, tip it. <laughs> uh, David found himself stuck in this water. I don't even know where he, what direction or what he thought he was gonna do or where he was gonna go. But the cool thing is, on our tracker off-roading vehicle right here, we have a electric winch, so we'll use that to try and get him off. Yeah, we'll get him off. <laughs> Jeez. It's an electric winch, so I'll press the button and it'll come out. You just grab it and hook it up. Pretty good. <laughs> oh, oh boo, on. you're already getting married. Take the dip. <laughs> Peer pressure. Peer pressure. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Let's <laughs> get. <laughs> Guy going through? Yeah, yeah. No. no. <laughs> I'm the guy that rescues everyone, not the guy that risks it. So, David, now that he knows I can get him unstuck, has decided he needs to keep one upping it. Yeah, don't do Scott, right up the middle. Right up the middle.
My name is Kyle Green with the Greenway Outdoors on the History Channel and I just wanted to speak for a few minutes because I'm so passionate about what happens at the Wildlife Center and Legends Ranch. So we don't talk about this enough but you learned about conservation as we went around the room and you can imagine all the kids that come on field trips and get the opportunity to learn these lessons that they're certainly not taught on the news, they're not taught in schools anymore and they don't understand what conservation truly is. So it's facilities like this that impact those kids every single day. 60% of hunting and fishing licenses are currently sold to white males over the age of 55. If we don't replace that demographic in probably the next 10 to 12 years, we're gonna lose 60% of the funding that we talked about when we were up there that pays for our species sustainability efforts, our anti-poaching efforts, everything that goes into conservation so that there's more white-tailed deer in North America right now as we sit here than ever in recorded history, all of that will go away. And it won't just affect hunters, it'll affect everybody. Things like the Flint water crisis that's being solved by the sale of duck hunting licenses. Our national parks, our clean water, all of those things come from that funding. So it's organizations like this that make it possible that the youth and the next generation can learn those things. On top of that, something that didn't get mentioned here and it's on my heart to tell you, is last year I think it was upwards of 90 kids somewhere in that ballpark that they took out for their very first deer hunt. Gave kids an opportunity that would never have the opportunity to deer hunt otherwise. Walked them through it and then made sure that the meat was processed so those kids could take it home and they could learn the connection that they have with their food, where their food actually comes from and plant that mustard seed that we will hope to continue to grow so they'll buy hunting and fishing licenses in the future and obviously become advocates for what we love. So we're all here for true conservation, for the scholarship fund. The food is so exciting, but just remember why we're here is to raise that money. Take a look at the silent auction items. Take a look at everything because all of it really goes to a great cause and we should all be very grateful that they exist. So thank you guys so much. <laughs> shoot them before they start running at you. They're on the mountains. You're gonna shoot them before they start climbing down at you. If you're looking for a hunk of fat and juicy meat, got my buddy Pumba here because he is a treat. <laughs> Come down the dine on a tasty swine. All you gotta do is get in line. <laughs> ah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a taste test of everything we're having tonight. The first thing is the alligator. I've got a little bit of sauce on it. They said it was a 27 pound gator. How heavy do you think what the gator was that we shot in Texas? On that, if that was a, I would bet that's what a two, three foot gator maybe? Three foot gator. And that was how many pounds? 27. Two bowling balls. Well, then ours was 70. <laughs> no, it was, it was way heavier than that. Great texture. One thing that people struggle with with gator is sometimes the texture gets rubbery, but this isn't that at all. No, it's good. I like how smoky it is. Great flavor. A little bit of rice with it. I rate the gator, as far as food overall on my palate goes, I rate it a 7.8. As far as eating gator goes, I gave it a 8.7. What a coincidence. I was thinking 7.83. <laughs> this next one is Aw Dad Stew. They do have. <laughs> but it was like, um, what was the Aw Dad Stew? Like, what is it? It's an Irish stew with pork and potatoes. Oh, that's what it is. An Irish stew. 
I would say that I can't tell that it's not beef. You know what's funny too is Audad kind of get like a bad rap as far as taste goes, and I've never had a bad experience. When we shot the ones in Oklahoma, Ted Nugent said that Audad is secretly one of his favorite foods, and for me, I think it's great stew. I think the stew is my favorite so far. The Audad I rank a 9.0 on the on the Audad scale, and I rate it a 9.0 in food overall. Yeah. Next up is the Elk Peppercorn Elk Demi Horseradish Cream Caramelized Sugar. It is so good. It is so good. I rate the Elk 7.8 on the Elk scale and 8.0 overall food, which seems impossible, but you have to you have to account for all the other foods in the world. That's why I put it there. Did you explain what the Elk scale is? When I say scale, I mean like examples of times I've had that food. Oh, the elk scale is only elk things, and then overall, I understand. Luckily, the audience isn't as deaf and dumb as him. Well, some of the comments we get sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next up is the uh, the last piece of Audad, which is... Garlic and rosemary roasted leg of Audad. Right there. Very beefy. I rank this odd ad in 8.9, just slightly under the 9.01 uh, in the stew. It looks beefy. Yeah. And I rank it uh, 8.5 overall on the eating scale. So overall, I'm eating like a king. This is fantastic. It's a great event. And uh, the live of music isn't bad either because then Jeff talks less. Some have gone. I don't like the music anymore. <laughs> okay, out of all the desserts, this is what I picked. This is like a custard blueberry taco. Cheesecake. Is it like cheesecake? cheesecake? Then this is a chocolate dipped strawberry. This is a cake pop. And this is lemon, what's the word? Pound cake. Pound cake? Lemon curd. Lemon curd. Let's do a taste test. I would like to know we're going to Hawaii soon, so all these dessert taste tests probably have to end soon, but <laughs> the first thing I'm going to eat is a cake pop covered in sprinkles. What do you mean, all these taste tests? <laughs> <laughs> they went with chocolate cake on the inside. Fun fact, I owned a cake pop company at one point, and a cake pop is technically cake and frosting blended together to make a new form of goodness, and they killed it on this one. I give it a nine out of 10, because it's extra chocolatey, and I'd like a little bit more vanilla balance, but nine out of 10 is still pretty high. Next one, chocolate dip strawberry. <laughs> 10 out of 10, and here's why. Since I've been eating fruit, I've had good strawberries twice. He's been eating fruit for a year and a half. Yeah, but I've been in search for good strawberries and can never find them. This one's a good strawberry, 10 out of 10. Next up, the lemon cake. Smash. <laughs> Did you get the curd in there? Yeah, that's amazing. That is a good lemon flavor. Oh, yeah. Nine out of ten. Last but not least, the taco. So this is like a cinnamon sugar donut on the outside, blueberries, and like a custard on the inside. <laughs> that, I think, is my favorite. That a little messy to eat, but that's an 11 out of 10. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! <laughs> that is good. It's like an elephant ear with custard. Why have I never seen these before? Scott, why don't you make this from now on? I would like decorative tacos at all of our fun events from here on oh, out. Of course, anything you want. <laughs> okay, perfect. He goes, anything you want for your big day. <laughs> 9.0, 8.9, 9.0. Did you explain what the elk scale is? 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 11 out of 10. This is probably one of the most fun wild game dinners I've ever been to. The facility is amazing. If you haven't checked out the Wildlife Center, I highly recommend it. It's in Bitely, Michigan. Thanks so much for tuning in. Stay green.